As we think about Holy Week, which we're entering into now, a lot of times we think about Palm Sunday and we think about Easter Sunday and everything in between gets a little bit fuzzy and we lose track of some of the details of what happened in the biblical storyline. We decided to ask a number of New Testament scholars if they would help us out, provide some of the historical, cultural, theological background, the sort of things that we might miss as we're reading through the story. We want to take each day of the week and try to answer some of those questions. So let's start with Sunday, Palm Sunday, March 29th, the first day of the week, first day of the Jewish week, and really the last week of Jesus' earthly life. We call it Palm Sunday because a crowd of Jesus' disciples, his followers, along with these Galilean pilgrims in town for the Passover festivities, had spread their palm branches and and their cloaks on the ground as Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. Now, most of us know at least that much of the story, but the, the details, the setting, the background, how many people actually populated Jerusalem at that time? How big was it? How many people were in town visiting for the festival? And what were they expecting from the coming Messiah? And what made this situation in particular, Jesus' actions, so volatile for the Jewish and the Roman leaders. Jerusalem was a very exciting place about this time of the year. Uh, Passover is one of the great pilgrimage festivals for the Jewish people. And so a city that people estimate might have been around 40,000 would uh, sometimes get to be six times that size at that time of the year as Jews flocked in from everywhere. It was a very exciting place, a busy place, a crowded place and a place that the Romans really worried about during that week because all of these Jews were gathering together, they were excited about their religion, and the Romans wanted to keep control of that. And so they were extra watchful of the Jews during that time. The way Jesus entered the city, mounted on a, on a donkey, uh, fulfilling the prophecy in Zechariah that, that the Messianic king would enter the city of Jerusalem exactly in this way, uh, it was very significant. It also emulated the way Solomon, King Solomon, entered the city when he was declared king. So the the message, uh, you know, visually uh, and spiritually was unmistakable that here the Messianic king came to enter God's holy city, Jerusalem. The crowds responded uh, with uh, excitement because they Many of them had heard about the Messiah and were expecting a national deliverer to reestablish the Davidic kingdom. And so Jesus is one who taught with authority, uh, far exceeding their other religious teachers, is one who healed, who even raised the dead, very much looked like the part of the Messiah. And so they welcomed him and, and, and prepared uh, the way for him uh, as the the Vidic king entering the holy city of Jerusalem. Jesus was entering into a very volatile situation then, and we could well understand how his entry into the city and some of the things that happened that week would have created a lot of concern for both Jews and Romans. Romans who wanted to keep the lid on things, but the Jewish authorities who wanted to keep a good reputation with Rome as well. They didn't want to let things get out of hand either because they wanted to keep good relationships with Rome. And so it was a very pressurized situation for Jesus and his disciples uh, during that, that week of uh, what was called the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, culminating in Passover. 